As soon as I hit record, the thing zoomed back. I don't understand what's going on. But there we are. We're in focus. So maybe we'll okay. Okay. So the question is got a 100 meter wire. It's copper. Figure two conduction electrons per atom. And 100 meter wires, you know, ballpark <coughs> a mole. Okay. Same mole of copper. 50 some grams. I'm not totally sure of that. Uh, and that thing's, you know, the, the, the coil wires, you know, a little more than that, but we're just rounding things off. Just a ballpark to get the feel for how fast electrons drift to give you various currents. So, if there are two conduction electrons per electron <coughs> per, per atom, there are six times 10 to the 24th atoms in a mole. And twice that is 1.2, uh, six times 10 to the 23rd, 6.023, whatever it is. It used to be 0.023, I'm not sure it still is. I think we measured it. Uh, I mean, it's always been what it is. Most recent measurements might not be 6.023. I haven't looked at it in years. Uh, twice that is about 10 to the 24. That's twice Avogadro's number. You've got an Avogadro's number in a mole and so forth. Coulomb is approximately 10 to the 19th electrons. Measuring the charge of an electron, as we mentioned before in class, and a little bit about how it's done. Um, Jesus Thompson's apparatus and so forth. Uh, it's actually closer to six times 10 to the 18th electrons, but that's close enough to six to 10 to the 19th. And remember, this is a little bit of an underestimate anyhow, so it's close enough to give us a general idea. We can work out the specifics, but there'd be a lot of, a lot of things to consider. Okay. Uh, how thick is a wire? How many of the conduction electrons are really conduction electrons? Stuff like that. Okay, well, we have, if we have a one amp current, well, that means there's one coulomb per second passing any given point. How fast is the electron cloud drifting? Okay, well, people try to reason this out using units. Okay, got some 10 to the meter per second. Uh, you know, you, you got to think that doesn't make sense. Okay, so when you get it, it doesn't make sense. You need to recognize that. Why doesn't that make sense? Well, ten to the fifth meters per second. That's hundred thousand meters per second. This is a hundred meter wire. It means all those electrons in the wire would pass by in a thousandth of a second. That'd be a thousand times uh, your. 10 to the 24th electrons, if you want to do electrons, or a thousand times the uh, 10 to the fifth coulombs, because you do have 10 to the fifth coulombs. You got that in there somewhere. And the 10 to the fifth coulombs in 10 to the 24th electrons, ballpark. Okay. The image of 100 meter wire. Containing ten to the fifth coulomb. If you picture this, you can ask yourself things like, okay, what if the electrons, what if, what if, let's divide this into ten. Ten equal sections, right? Now, if all these electrons, all the electrons in here pass every second, what would the current be? Well, it would be one tenth of 10 to the fifth coulombs, because that's what you have here. Okay? You might think of electrons passing a point. You don't have an image, a picture to go with your symbols. So, I mean, the symbolic reasoning and, and uh, 
dimensional analysis to be a powerful tool if you get it right. Okay, it's easy to get it wrong. So if you, if you want to have some math, if you want to have at least two ways to see the result. And what I'm probably be doing. So uh, if electrons are drifting a thousand one this fast, you'd have 10 to the fourth coulombs every second. Now the question is, how fast would the electron cloud be drifting if it was one coulomb per second? Well, it seems that this path, this far per second, which is 10 meters, it can't be 100 meters, 10 meters per second uh, is way too good because you're getting 10,000 times what you want. Okay. Well, then you can say, okay, well, let's uh, let's divide this up into 10 equal pieces. You know, just kind of be sure. Well, then you have a tenth of that. Well, each of these would be a hundred of the line. Each of these would be a meter then. Okay. Well, one question I kind of pose if they're going a meter per second, how many would pass in a second? Well, all the electrons in one meter would pass in a second. So you would have how many electrons in one meter? Well, you, this is a hundred meters with 10 to the fifth coulombs. It's pretty clear. That came up somewhere. Somebody yeah, you know, had that written down. That's pretty good reasoning here, but since someone hey right here, although we did end up with the right answer. Not sure what this stuff was doing there. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so one meter per second, you'd have 10 to the third treatment. Well, that's a thousand times what you want. Well, you can probably jump at this point to say, well, okay. All the electrons in a thousandth of a meter. Okay, how big is a thousandth of a meter? Can you show me some figures? Now, I don't know what this thing is doing. It doesn't even have millimeters on it, but it's a millimeter. If you're familiar with a meter stick, you know how big a millimeter looks, right? And that's not a very fast drift. I mean, it's going to take a thousand seconds for one meter of this electron cloud to pass. That's like 16, 17 minutes. Okay. And that's for one meter. So a one meter every 17 minutes. About the speed I move. Okay. So um, that 100 meters is going to take 1,700 minutes. That's 30 hours. It'll be 30 hours for all those electrons at the point at one six coulomb per second, one half per. Now we're looking at these little crank generators. We can't produce more than about a tenth of an amp. Okay. Well, a tenth of an amp, you'd have to take that millimeter and divide it into 10, right? Tenth of a millimeter per second. You want to have that image so you can immediately think about what you're seeing. Um, and when you're dealing with a circuit, you can visualize the drift. It helps connect you with what's going on rather than working out here in symbols that are easy to confuse. And I, I mean, this reasoning is good too. It should not stand by itself, nor should that. They should reconcile. And that's how we get our hands on a lab situation where we really understand what's going on instead of plugging like numbers into some formulas. Okay, now there's a formula that goes with it, you should be able to derive it. Um, if, if we have, uh, okay, well, let me go into that. Uh, What well, lambda be your charge per unit length? Okay. We've seen that. that you're, 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 uh, we'll call it the free charge per unit length, the charge that's available for conduction. Okay. The conduction charge. Uh, I'm not even sure there's a good word for that. If there is, I'll in my head. Ah, uh, there should be. Okay, anyhow, I'm going to call it the 
charge to unit left. And then of the current I the SI unit is amps. It used to be coulombs per second. But we can measure amps more accurately than we measure coulombs, so we change. I mean, I didn't get involved in it. Nobody asked my advice, but I've been along with them. You know, they know a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, SI units of amps. Uh, MR7 with amps is an amp is a coulomb per second, right? I'm not going to put it down there, but. Think about that. Okay, current I, SI units of amps. Um, then what's the drift velocity? I'm going to give you five minutes. If you can reason that out, hopefully with a picture. Okay. But yeah, units, units could be okay too. Uh, but uh, if you're going to use units to reason it out, you'd better have a picture or something more rigorous than just a dimensional analysis. Okay. Dimensional analysis can guide you. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, now, took a while. To really understand these relations, how drift velocity, current, and density, current density per unit length, okay, current per unit length, current and charge per unit length, charge density, uh, are related. And they're not related by dimensional analysis, although that can be a guide. And you know, we've got the dimensional analysis with numbers. And then we pose the question, you've got free charge per unit length is lambda. Current is I. Those are like given quantities, okay? So what's the drift velocity in terms of these two quantities? To a convoluted reasoning chain, sometimes guided by natural analysis, sometimes by other things. It took quite a while, but we came up with the idea that uh, lambda delta x over delta t divided by lambda should be the drift velocity, okay? Well, if you simplify that, you say delta x over delta t is a drift velocity, is that so? So to answer that question, Came up with another pretty interesting intuitive idea that the drift velocity should be drift velocity times the square, square root of drift velocity times delta x over delta t. Now that was based on units. Okay. So then, yeah, I suggested, okay, there's the equation. That's what you're saying. Solve that for drift velocity, which was easily done. Um, Actually, this last step, drift velocity equals drift velocity squared. Well, I think it's maybe drift velocity squared equals drift velocity squared. Uh, if I solve this for VD, I divide both sides here by VD, and I get VD equals delta x over delta t, right? That's a solvent. I didn't really look at it. I figured you already have this. <laughs> well, if that's true, but of course you don't know if that's true because it only has the right units. And understanding 
what this expression really means, and just because it has the right unit, probably a stretch. And yeah, that would be, I, I can't look at that and say what it means, okay? Yeah, most people are not going to look at that. It doesn't really have a physical meaning. It just happens to be equal to your drift velocity. It's still not a bad suggestion because it gives us something interesting to think about, right? So, you know, it's kind of interesting. The picture of which we, you know, pose the picture for you. That, okay, here's some like, okay, a meter of wire, but it could be anyway. We don't really need to know how long this is. And we really don't want this in the picture because uh, this can guide our reason, but it's not symbolic at this point. And we've already reasoned out what the drift velocity ought to be. If the current is an amp, okay? So there's a premise behind this. In general, we've got lambda, we've got I, and we've got drift velocity. Now, I suggested this at a point. This is how far you go in delta P. And for a minute, you saw that this is your drift, the delta X over delta. The delta X is your drift velocity times delta T. Okay. Now, had you been working this and not sitting there with me asking questions, you hopefully would have written down that, okay, so. Delta X is direct velocity times delta T, right? Because you saw that. So when you see something, you write it down, maybe with a little question mark. Is that really true? Things are a little fuzzy as you're working through a, 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 a situation. Okay, so your delta X is this. So now we get down to here. And uh you know, I, I again pose the question, what can you tell me about this length of wire? Okay. It's a little while we came up with anything. Okay, well, the charge, you just multiply your coulombs per meter by your meters. In other words, your charge density lambda times your delta x, right? And that gives you the charge here. Well, what's the current I? And I think you, you suggested this, and I put it in symbols for you. It's delta Q over delta T, right? Which is lambda delta x over delta t. At this stage, if you were still thinking about this, you'd say, oh, duh, right, there's your drift velocity. Wouldn't have had to go to this or this. Now, that's how we got to this, it's pretty interesting, okay? Maybe it was guided by units, turned out to be true. But it turns out to be true just because delta x over delta t is what your drift velocity is. That's the assumption behind delta x, see how far you go in delta t. Again, we saw this, but lost it. And we saw this, okay? But lost that connection. Put this together with this, and you see you've got your drift loss. You know, this is actually a pretty simple picture, how these things are related. So what I'm asking you to do then is each of you uh, write up a page that really deeply explains how these things are related. Because when we get into looking at current densities, as opposed to charge densities within a conductor, uh, you're going to really want to have a good understanding of this. And I know you can do that. So I want that written up. And you don't have you know, your next assignment, web assignment is due Wednesday. So I'm going to ask for that money. Give me your best. Why not? Okay. The best, clearest, most concise, but complete explanation. I don't expect miracles out of that. I'm certainly going to find something. Well, you could have done this, you could have done that. Okay. 
We couldn't make it. You know, you know, these are the kind of things you can keep refining for a long time. And I'm not trying to prepare you to do publication. It's not clear. Uh, you know, you're an engineering curriculum. You're probably going to go into application. You're probably not going to be writing papers anytime soon. Although you probably have to do some in some of your courses. Okay. So it could prepare you for that. Um, okay. So. And what this written up. Now let's go ahead and measure something. 